Well, how the turntables turn. I'm normally a MacBook Pro 13 person. Heck, if you've seen this channel at all, there are plenty of videos with me saying that it's my favorite laptop ever made and that it's the absolute best way into the Apple Mac OS ecosystem. But today, today I might need to eat those words, my friends, because the brand new MacBook Air has legitimately shocked me at every step. Now, that's not to say the new MacBook Pro 13 is bad, because it's not, it's fantastic, and we'll talk about that later in the week. But one week later, I'm absolutely, 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 absolutely blown away by the new MacBook Air. And I'm almost as surprised that I've been recommending it to so many of you. So with that initial glowing recommendation, when we dig into it a bit, what do I really think after a week of use? Let's find out. And while we're finding out, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. The MacBook Air. Holy cow, the MacBook Air. Team, everybody watching, I cannot tell you how excited I am to make this video. I've been dying to tell you my opinions of this thing, though, if you follow me on Twitter, as you should, links in the description, it should come as no surprise. And starting off the surprise, let's quickly touch on the specs and ordering options if this is your first time hearing about this newest lightweight MacBook. The MacBook Air, much like the Mac Mini and the MacBook Pro 13, has been released with the new Apple M1 processor, which, yes, it does make it kind of hard to lay this out like a previous model MacBook where I could say, this many cores, this many gigahertz, blah, 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 blah. It, they lay it out a little bit differently than that. So I'll say that the CPU here has eight cores, its integrated GPU also has seven cores because I have the lower end model, and its neural engine has 16 cores. This base model also comes equipped with a 256 gigabyte solid state drive and eight gigabytes of unified memory. All of this, all of this package right here, will run you $999, making this, right now, the cheapest way into a MacBook. If you want to though, there are some changes that you could make. You could spec this up to the full eight core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, and a two terabyte solid state drive, bringing that up to 2049. But that's enough. We talked the specs, those are boring, let's get the specs out of the way. Specs are now out of the way because the things that I've really liked and the things that I've disliked after the past week of use are what we're really here to talk about. Like we talked about with the Mac Mini last week, when it comes to dislikes, there is not a single significant deal breaker inside of this laptop. I don't think you could find a legitimate argument to make against this thing in any way, shape, or form unless you have specific programs that will only run on a different operating system. Personally, there are only two tiny things and I do think I'm kind of stretching it to make these work for the video, but there are some things that I'd complain about. First thing is much like the previous model of the MacBook Air, you only get two Thunderbolt 3 ports, which with as versatile as Thunderbolt 3 is, that's not necessarily the bad part. What I don't like is that these two ports are right next to each other. Like I mention often, if Apple is only gonna give us two, I do wish they'd separate them on each side of the body. This would allow for much more flexibility in how we could set up any potential accessories that we might wanna use, like say we wanna plug this into an external monitor or something like that. And the second non-complaint would be that this is still in the same body as the last MacBook Air, which while totally usable, it's kind of getting stale at this point. When I talk about how good a laptop can look, I like to point to the Dell XPS line because they, they look amazing and they're fantastically functional. And with what can be done with the thermal performance of these processors, much more on the thermal performance of the MacBook Air in a little bit, I think we could get some really, really cutting edge and modern designs because we could go even smaller than this. But that's it. And not a single one of those was a real usability complaint. Those are just a few refinements that we could make to this laptop to make it even better than the even better refinement that we just got. Because moving on to the things I like, everything. I like everything about this laptop. I'd go so far as to say that this is my perfect laptop. And if I were to have said that previously, if you were to have heard me say, and this is my perfect laptop, I would have been talking about the MacBook Pro 13 because that's the only laptop thus far that has brought that kind of love out in me. And while I do like everything about this MacBook, I love certain parts of it. So let's get to the love parts first. Let's get to the I'm in like-like with this laptop parts first. The very first thing that I love about this laptop is the battery life. And I know, believe me, that sounds crazy coming from me because when it comes to battery life on technology, 
I'm pretty binary. Does it give me enough to make it through a full day of work? If so, it gets the check mark and we all move on with our lives. If it doesn't, well, then I give it the thumbs down and then we have some problems because we got to complain about it here in the videos. The MacBook Air has such good battery life that I've gone two days without needing to charge it. Two days! And those weren't softball days where I did just the bare minimum and like left it right like this so I could make a cool statement for a YouTube video. I spent those two days rendering several 4K videos, playing hours of World of Warcraft, gotta get my Fury Warrior up for Shadowlands, watching hours of YouTube videos, and working for hours doing clerical work. This laptop, the MacBook Air, lasts forever. It lasts forever, and it's only surpassed by the MacBook Pro 13. I'm pointing at it right now, and I cannot wait to tell you how crazy blown away I am by that thing when we talk about that in the next video. You can truly feel unplugged from the wall and not need to carry around a bunch of spare batteries because this battery lasts. And another really cool thing is much like other Apple MacBooks, you get the full power when you're unplugged. You do not take a performance hit because you're not plugged into the wall like Windows machines. And that means you have a truly portable, almost desktop-like experience in this tiny Ultrabook. Look how small this thing is. What? What? Okay, I promise. I made my I made a promise to myself that when scripting this video, I would only say that once because this whole video could just be me having a bunch of shocked reactions to this computer. And I'm trying really hard not to just rebrand myself as the everyday battery level reaction guy. Ted Blurg for short. <laughs> the next thing I like about the MacBook Air is I do really like the physical body of this laptop. As a normal MacBook Pro user, it's weird having a body that's actually designed more ergonomically for typing. The back, you can see it right here, the back of this machine is slightly wider than its front, giving a curved design that does make it a little more comfortable when typing. Like when you lay your wrists on it right here, it eases you into the keyboard. On other Macs, because of the rigidity of the body, if I'm not like perfectly level with the machine while working, I will sometimes get marks on my forearm where the computer pushes into my arm. And after a while, this does become an uncomfortable experience. And if I'm typing in bed or I'm typing on a couch, it's even worse because you're like, it just doesn't work. It just does not work as well. So having a nice arm mark free typing experience, that's definitely a plus in my world. Which, okay, that continues very well into the nice thing I like. I love typing on these smaller MacBooks. The new Magic Keyboard that they put in earlier this year, it's just amazing. I know there's a dedicated set of Lenovo keyboard fans, and that's awesome, everybody likes different things. But for my money, there is no better typing keyboard in the laptop world than this 13 inch Magic Keyboard. Can you hear this? The keys are just crisp enough, they have just enough travel to make things interesting, and it's really easy to get into a typing groove. Sometimes keys can feel great, but due to either needing too much force to push or not enough rebound from the keys themselves, it can make it difficult to get into that good typing groove. I'm all about, I am all about that good typing groove. And this has the highest grooveability of all the keyboards. I don't know if that's a thing, but I'm definitely, we're trademarking. Trademark grooveability keyboard stuff for the everyday dad. Ding! Oh, and as an added bonus, the MacBook Air does not have a touch bar. It has physical function keys on the top row. Mwah! 10 out of 10 keyboard, but nothing else comes close. Look, the next thing I like, I thought I would never, ever, ever say about a MacBook Air. The thermal performance on this thing is shocking. And I mean shocking in a good way. And for me, this is more impressive than the battery life. I stress this. If you hear me talk about laptops, you will hear me stress about this because it's easy to fall into the marketing trap that brands put out there about the specs or components they'll put in a laptop. Oh my goodness, it's got a 12 core processor and a graphics card the size of my motorcycle. You'll get all your gaming and productivity done on it. I mean, that's great and all, but if they can't properly thermally manage those high end components, you are at, you're literally, you're taking money out of your wallet and throwing it away because the way that you mitigate that heat is you either undervolt those components have fans with the noise level rivaling that of the mentioned motorcycle, or it's going to be gigantic like my Dell gaming laptop. What's crazy is the MacBook Air does none of those things. It does none of those things. It's very small, does not have a single fan, and it gets roughly the same performance as that MacBook Pro 13 or Mac Mini. How does it do it? Magic? I, I seriously don't know. 
And this, of all the three M1 machines we've been talking about and will continue to talk about, the thermal performance on the MacBook Air is legit the one thing across all three computers that I think is the most impressive. I've tried getting this thing to overheat in regular use cases. I haven't put it in an oven or I haven't run three hour like Cinebench tests on it. I've edited videos, I've played hours of World of Warcraft at high settings, and I've used it while like resting on a blanket or putting it in conditions that doesn't conduce like airflow. And this thing does not overheat. The bottom of the laptop, now in all fairness, the bottom of the laptop will get warm, but not hot slightly warm to the touch and considering that my Razer Blade 15 both has jet engine loud fans and it gets uncomfortable to touch while doing the same things that I do on this MacBook Air this has no right to be this good this has no right to be this good I'm legitimately impressed. And while I can no longer use the Intel specific tools to monitor the temperature of the CPU because it doesn't have an Intel CPU, running the terminal thermal log command, the CPU has never once throttled while rendering video, playing games, or anything. I have no words for this. Honestly, I have no words for this. Hats off to the M1 engineering team because these processors are basically magic. Also, while the hat's off, Gary, hat's off to you for this completely seamless transition over into the power on hand with the M1 processors. I'm getting good at this YouTube thing. The power here is both great and sort of okay at the same time. The M1 processor is for real, and the 8-core CPU, 7-core GPU, and more importantly, I think the 16-core neural engine, all of that combines together into some wild power levels for a portable, lightweight Ultrabook. If you use Apple's first-party software that's been fully transitioned and optimized for Apple Silicon, you will get better performance than even high-end Intel-based Macs. I get comparable render times in Final Cut Pro on this cheaper MacBook Air than I ever did on my least $5,000 iMac Pro or my current $4,000 MacBook Pro 16. It's... I've said unbelievable, I've said shocking, I've said honestly, it, the power on hand here is ridiculous. And if you are a video editor or a camera operator, these M1 Macs can handle high efficiency codecs in ways that older computers handled linear codecs. No drop frames, no skips, no crashes, anything. This single change in the past week has completely revamped all of this video workflow that you're currently seeing here. And now all of my cameras are shooting in HEVC. This by itself, this small change, has cut my production storage costs in half for the same quality. Okay, Gary, okay. Not everyone is a video editing nerd. Calm down, Gary, calm down. I'm calm, I'm calm. Plus, the only game that I really play, World of Warcraft, Blizzard has also revamped its client to properly work with the M1. I'm able to consistently get 60 frames per second on the high settings from an Ultrabook without a fan. Whoa, I almost, I almost said it. I almost said the W word again. And the icing on top, thanks to Apple's Rosetta 2, I also haven't had a single problem with any of the other Intel-based applications that I still need mainly Adobe Photoshop. I was legit worried when these ARM-based chips were announced that there might be some compatibility issues, and I haven't yet had a single one. I have seen others online that have problems with more niche programs, but my workflow is untouched, just faster, smaller, and I don't have to wear earplugs for. However, we gotta also have the downer part of this conversation. I did say okay and great. Here's the okay-ish part. As much as I wish this power was totally across the board, I do wanna make one note. If the application that you wanna use primarily leans on a dedicated graphics card, I have found that my Mac with a dedicated graphics card to have more power and capability on hand. Again, as somebody that does hours of video editing a week, the program that I normally use is called DaVinci Resolve. And yes, they do have a version of it for the M1 Max, and it works fine in use, but when rendering, DaVinci is heavily reliant on the GPU. And it does show a lot here. The integrated GPU here, it's okay. On my MacBook Pro 16, I'll get about 70 frames per second in the render, or almost half real time. When rendering on the MacBook Air, I'll get just about real time, which look, Look, that's an academic complaint because when you, that's wild when you consider that this is a thousand dollar laptop. This is a thousand dollar laptop without a fan, but fairness for fairness sake, primarily graphics oriented tasks, you will find a dedicated GPU to be better. Leading to the last thing that I actually like, that I like, like, cough, I love, the price. You get all of this wild bananas, other kind of power fruit, 
thermal performance, and battery life for the exact same price as the earlier model. You get that while totally revamping and revolutionizing this line to compete against other machines that cost double, triple, and they kept it in the same price bracket with the base model coming in at $999. Not gonna say it. I do personally think that Apple still charges too much for their storage options, but when you consider this laptop, especially at the base model, this is totally usable, and I haven't found myself all that limited by the seven core GPU in any real sense. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Should you go out and buy a MacBook Air? Should you go get one of these? If you need a portable powerhouse that lasts forever and has no thermal problems and makes no noise, yes, absolutely go out and buy the brand new MacBook Air. I'm so impressed with this computer. And every day that I use it, my jaw hits the floor. Every day, I find some new task that's performing amazingly well. I find that the battery lasts just a little bit longer. It's it's crazy. Obviously, if you have a computer that's already working, upgrading will have to be a personal decision as I don't know what you need to get your job done. But this right here, this is a fantastic laptop and it's way better than I thought it was gonna be. Thanks to today's sponsor, Squarespace, you can create your own very beautiful website. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a professional website online store or portfolio. It's easy to claim a domain slash URL, create a custom site that matches your style and bring your ideas to life. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash everyday dad to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thank you for watching.